So we're going to go through the tropical rainforests part of the GCSE uh, to help you with your revision. We're going to look at the structure, something about deforestation and then some sustainable management issues. So first of all, here's a photograph of the tropical rainforest as it typically looks, which we can use to identify some of the key characteristics. You'll notice that lots and lots of dense vegetation, such as these treetops here, this is part of the canopy, and then emergent trees, such as this tall one here, that stick up above and beyond the canopy. If we think about that in terms of a diagram, this diagram here shows the structure very clearly. If we work up from the bottom, um, down at the ground level, it's very, very dark, not much plant growth because it's so gloomy, but an awful lot of rotting vegetation and fungus. And that's really important for the recycling of all the nutrients in the rainforest. The darkness and the gloom means that not much actually uh, grows in terms of complete plants, although if you have a clearing or something like that, or if a tree falls to create a clearing, then you'll get lots of saplings appearing in the clearing. Higher up we've got the canopy layer, this is the main layer of vegetation, um, usually about 20 metres or so high. Uh, that's what we saw on the photograph a moment ago, the mature trees, the fully grown trees. Also there we have um, lots of climbing plants like lianas or creepers. You can see them drawn in here all over the place. Uh, they have their roots in the ground but don't really have a trunk. They um, sort of tie themselves to the trees to creep up to, towards the light. Uh, all of these trees use the, the rotted down vegetation uh, uh, as their main source of nutrients. Very few nutrients really in the tropical rainforest are actually stored in the soil. Uh, most of it's stored in the vegetation. And then, sticking out above the canopy, uh, we get the occasional emergent trees. Those are the real tropical hardwood giants, which um, are many years old and uh, have, have grown extremely tall. And you can see it on the diagram as well, it shows the buttress roots that are a key characteristic of the very tall trees. Uh, without those roots, they'd be unstable and would probably fall over. OK, so now some stuff on deforestation. Rondonia is a province of Brazil. If we go back to 1975, excuse me, if we go back to 1975 here, see how little deforestation there was uh, only uh, about 30 years ago, 40 years ago, sorry. We've got one roadway that comes through here, there, and another there, uh, which would just be linking a few small villages in the forest at that time. By 1989, this had developed quite substantially. You can see the same roadways are marked very clearly uh, on the satellite images. But you'll notice that particularly here and here and down here we've got evidence of settlements beginning to develop. Those settlements will be mainly occupied by people uh, working in the forest who are carrying out the logging and the deforestation. Um, and this is what the, what the characteristic sort of herringbone pattern is, these parallel lines uh, going off the main routeways, uh, all the avenues that have been cut into the forest uh, along which the trees, once chopped down, would be removed to the roadway to be taken away. And this is how large-scale deforestation uh, really gets going. And if we move on to 2001, you can see the extent to which this has happened much more significantly. Those herring herringbone patterns have grown no end. There's a lot more deforestation along them. Far more settlements. The settlements have grown to be much larger and probably interspersed with here are other sorts of land use as well, as well being interspersed with the logging. So that's the sort of evidence of damage happening to the tropical rainforest over the course of the last uh, 40 years or so. Next we need to understand why this, ha this is happening uh, and the reasons for the deforestation are of course different in different parts of the world. These statistics show the causes of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon um, but if we looked at other parts of the world, so for example Malaysia or the Congo in Africa, uh, we get perhaps different, slightly different reasons. But in the Brazilian Amazon, cattle ranching is the key uh, reason for deforestation. That's mainly to grow um, cattle to provide for provide food for both the South American market and the North American market. A lot of it goes to fast food. Um, sort of processed meat products for the fast food industry. And 65 to 70% of the deforested land in the Brazilian Amazon is turned into cattle ranching land. 
and it's reasonably fertile for a while, but soon the fertility, which was of course mainly stored in the vegetation, is used up uh, and is, is no longer uh, available for the cattle. We also get some small-scale agriculture, uh, shown over here, um, sort of thing, about a quarter of the deforestation, uh, and that is probably mostly plantation agriculture of coffee and cocoa, uh, which can be grown by individual producers and then sold to large companies or, or foreign uh, export companies. Um, noticeably things like logging itself, the actual chopping down of the trees, is, is really a very small part of the cause of the deforestation. Uh, not much logging takes place to actually harvest the trees, much more of it takes place to get the land for agriculture. The reasons would be different in other parts of the world, partly because cattle ranching is not something which is in demand in other parts of the world. Uh, if we looked at some of the things from Malaysia, we'd probably find that palm oil plantations were a, a major uh, reason for the uh, deforestation. That's probably the, the biggest cash crop in, in Malaysia, uh, and palm oil is widely used in, in catering as well. Now, if we have a think about why this has happened uh, around the place... I think it's important to make a connection between deforestation and population growth. There's a strong correlation between population growth and the amount of deforestation that's been experienced. As population has grown, so the amount of deforestation has increased significantly, as it says here. That, of course, means that there's an increase in demand for resources, food being a key one. So a lot of rainforest land has been cleared to provide new agricultural land to feed the increased population. Um, it also increases a, a demand for places to live and for jobs to do. And of course, this agriculture and other activities in uh, the rainforest can provide both of those things. So um, settlements like Manaus in Brazil have grown extremely fast. Uh, and also programmes like the Transmigration Programme in Malaysia and Indonesia have seen people forced to relocate to rainforest areas in order to work or, uh, in agriculture to provide food for this increasing population. Uh, and finally, energy, that's also led to deforestation. The construction of hydroelectric dams in um, Brazil and also in, in Malaysia, such as the Bakun Dam in Sarawak, which you'll find referenced in your textbook, uh, wouldn't have been necessary if there hadn't been an increase in population and an increase in demand for energy. Next up, how can this be sustainably management, managed? Well, let's remember what sustainability is, or sustainable management is, meeting the needs of the present generation without jeopardising the needs of future generations. And of course, this is ever harder to do if you have population growth. If more people are in the present generation, then sustainable management is going to be tricky. The trees are being felled for different reasons, uh, to, to make land available. Uh, replanting programmes can go some way towards make that, making that sustainable, but they both need to be necessary in order for uh, that, that, that to be a successful programme. And you should look at the information in the book about the, the cycle of um, felling and replanting that's practised in Malaysia to help understand that. And finally, a few tips about the whole course to revise from. Uh, make sure that you brush up on your terminology, especially to do with the food chain and the food web. Remember that the three ecosystems we've studied are the deserts, the temperate deciduous woodlands and the tropical rainforests, as shown here. And finally, um, for those three ecosystems, you should make sure that you understand what the characteristics of them are, what the climate is, what the nature of the plants and animals are, the flora and fauna. Understand how the biotic components, i.e. the flora and fauna, well, the flora and fauna, the plants and animals, have adapted to the conditions, to the abiotic features like the climate. Um, understand how humans have exploited that ecosystem for economic uh, outcomes, so things about settlement, agriculture, tourism, um, mineral extraction if appropriate, and so forth. And finally, make sure you understand how sustainable management can be achieved uh, in those countries.